Hello, good evening everybody, uh, and welcome to our virtual parent network meeting. Uh, this evening I'm joined by Daryl Castellino, my assistant principal, Stephanie Musgrave, leader Hi, of the everyone. primary, and Georgia Fitzalan, uh, kindergarten teacher. Uh, now, for those of you who are new to um, our PEN evenings, uh, Parent Education Network evenings, usually um, I begin with the principal's report. And this, this evening, my principal's report is going to include uh, all of us doing a combined principal's report. So I'll get it underway. Um, I know that for everyone, uh, the building is front and centre in your thinking. How's the school going? People often ask me, are we going to be in on time? Uh, I'm yet to report to you that um, the building is bang on schedule. And uh, we, the practical completion date for the school is August 2021. And we're hoping to transition uh, into the school in term four, which is around uh, the second week in October. Um, into the school. So we'll have August to October to orient uh, the students, the staff, into the learning spaces, into the school, and then we'll make the formal transition on the first day of Term 4 in 2021. Um, I'm sure you can see that there are pictures um, um, of our visit last week. Last week we took some students across to uh, see the site themselves, five students, and we'll have similar visits ongoing between now and uh, August next year. Okay, uh, enrolments. So, um, our enrolments are looking really good. Um, I love this diff. Okay. Um, so, our current enrolments are. Uh, 64 in the, uh, this is the enrolments for 2021. We've got 64 new kindergarten students, Georgia. That's fantastic. That's very exciting, met some of them already. <laughs> fantastic. Uh, and year one will go to 39, and um, year two will be 37. So that gives us a combined enrolment of 140 in uh, the kindergarten primary school uh, next year. In the secondary, we have 129 year sevens, uh, 85, no, 95 year eights, uh, 67 year nines, and 32 year tens. And that gives us a combined enrolment of 323 in the high school, the secondary school. So when you put the primary enrolment and the secondary enrolment together, we will have a total school enrolment of 463 students. Wow. Right? That's amazing, isn't it? Mm, Growing okay. so quickly. Do you remember the days when we just had, uh, what? To, we had less than 100 yeah. combined yeah. enrolment. So 463. And if you look at 2022's figures, we already have 300 applications for 2022. We're still in 2020, aren't we? <laughs> okay. And uh, we've got 300 applications on hand for um, 2022. So it, uh, it's really looking really, really good. Okay, now I've got some good news for you uh, because um, we've just entered a, we've just bought a premium package for Dr. Justin Coulson. Uh, I'm sure many of you um, know just Dr. Justin Coulson. Uh, he's been here before. He's uh, a family ex mm. expert. Uh, and um, we've signed up for his, his, his package, which includes um, webinars, educational webinars, and uh, parent resources, okay? Now, if you want to uh, sign up for this free, it's free premium uh, membership, usually this would cost $170 per family, but mm -hmm. we've, the school has paid for it, and it's free, uh, well, you paid for it effectively, through your school fees, but we've uh, we've got it at a very very discounted rate. Mm -hmm. um, if you click into that link up on the screen, uh, you'll be able to set up your own account and then access uh, the Happy Families program. Mm -hmm. um, it, it it deals with a whole lot of topics such as um, 
sibling rivalries, uh, managing screens, uh, building resilience, and dealing with anxiety in your child. So I encourage you to sign up and uh, see what it's like. Okay, uh, now, up and coming events. Uh, I'm not going to talk in any great detail about this. Uh, Mr. Castellino and uh, Ms. Musgrave and Ms. Fitzgerald will talk to you in more detail. But our orientations have begun. Last Wednesday, we had our first uh, our kindy orientation. Very successful first kindy orientation. The teachers are really excited to meet the kids. And yes. We can't wait for Wednesday this week and Excellent. Wednesday the following to yep. meet them all and really get to know them. Fantastic. And so the kindy orientation will run over three consecutive Wednesdays. We've had last week, Wednesday was the fourth. Uh, in two days' time, it's the 11th of, of November and then the 18th is the, uh, the last one. And they run in two hour blocks of, of time. And then we also have the Year 7 orientation. And that will happen when our current Year 7s are away on camp. And so there'll be, um, the next year's cohort will have the school to themselves. Um, well, I suppose you're right and, and you know will be here as well. Um, now, this is very important, parents. Uh, the Orientation evening for parents, the parent information evenings, have been changed from the 18th to the 19th of November. And the reason why we've done that is because apparently there's a game, there's a game of rugby league on the 18th. Oh, is there? Yes, there is. Yes. <laughs> I didn't notice. Yes. <laughs> so we've had to move it because it clashed with the state of origin. So it'll be on the 18th, 19th of November. Uh, and we're going to run both the evenings together. Kindergarten will be 6 to 7.30, and Year 7 uh, next year uh, will be 7.30 to 9, okay? We also have Year 7 camp coming up, which Mr. Castellino is going to talk about in a little while. And of course, we also have the awards day uh, towards, in the last week of term, we have the, our student uh, awards day. Okay, now I'm going to hand you over to uh, the lovely uh, duo, Ms. Musgrave <laughs> and Mr. Tillin. So hello everyone, a quick update on the primary um, and it's very true that time flies when you're having fun. So much fun. It's already week five and it feels like it's been four terms in yeah. five weeks. I can't believe we've already up to the stage of meeting our new kindergarten students. It felt mm. like yesterday that you came on board yes. and we had the orientation for our current kindy students and already we're gearing up for our next 64 kids to come on board. Yes, so at the moment this term for the primary school, we started off in week two with our book week celebrations. So the children came to school all dressed up. So did the teachers. <laughs> and the teachers <laughs> and even Mr DeVries turned <laughs> up. Um, it was Superman with Superdog. So the highlight for the children, I'd say, would have to be finally meeting Arlo, our school dog. I don't know how many students came up to us and said, this is the best day of my life. <laughs> and it kind of was about ours too. It was incredible. It wasn't just book week celebrations. It wasn't just meeting Arlo. But... We also had an incursion. <laughs> yes, we had a, our science incursion and um, the children in kindergarten had been learning about the seasons all year at the start of the term, the first um, four weeks. They learn about the season they were in. Um, so this was a final um, little incursion where they learned about the weather and their eyes were just lit up um, when they learned that you can move someone with air if you pump air and they fly off the chair and we had... <laughs> Um, water tornadoes and flying rockets across yes. the oh, classroom wow. and a fire nado a fine oh and a mm. rocket tea bag rocket tea bag. honestly the teachers were just as impressed as the students <laughs> <laughs> and just as shocked <laughs> so it was a really fun field day um, on our book week celebration day um, and the costumes as well we've we've got to say the parent to the parents thank you so much um, you know, there was this grug outfit that parents had obviously put a lot of effort into. There was um, chicka chicka boom boom, um, oh, so cute. a few wallies like the teachers. <laughs> um, but yeah, a really, really fun day. Um, and the teachers also put in a lot of um, time to organise some stations. So we had a few books. What were we had? Yeah, we had well, I as I went as Rainbow Bear, obviously, you would have all seen that. I then read Rainbow Bear. Um, and then we actually chose a selection of books from the shortlist, the shortlist of um, 
picture books for, for this year and the children were able to rotate through the different activities throughout the day. So we had a real big day focused on literacy and mm. just that love of reading and sharing stories with each other. Yeah, and one of the ones they really enjoyed was we read Bat versus Poss and it was about sharing and friendship. So we made little friendship bracelets. So hopefully they made and they took them home because um, that was their little takeaway. Um, but the fight hasn't stopped there. Since week one, we've had gymnastics every Friday. It's really hard for the teachers not to also get involved in that. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been learning about balance. Um, the children are using the bars, so they have to push themselves up on the bars and swing their feet around and um, the mini trampoline. Yeah, that's good. The fun. trampoline's great. I've even seen like little kindies doing like sit-ups and push-ups and yes. they really get into it. It's great. <laughs> yes. So, um, and as well, we've also, for um, religious education and formation, we've made sure this term that um, Father Omar comes in every single Thursday. And it's really beautiful what he does. He presents um, a little presentation to the children and asks some questions. And if they have questions, they ask him. And they're just some of the most... Um, beautiful innocent questions and one of the ones the children were really um, focused on was how can I be a saint mm -hmm. um, and so when Father Omar came in this week and celebrated mass he did a little homily about um, how they can be saints mm -hmm. and how there are saints just as young as them and the children were saying what's the youngest saint what's the <laughs> oldest saint they were so interested um, but yeah and they got to dress up for all yeah. saints so we've been very very blessed having both Father Omar and Father Carlos involved in the school and on such a frequent basis, the children get so excited to see him. And I actually don't know who is more excited, the children seeing Father Omar or Father Omar seeing the children. And he comes in with the biggest smile on his face and always has a beautiful, you know, parable or story of a saint or something to share with the children. And that was really brought to life on All Saints Day. Yes. Credit to all of the parents as well. I was just in awe Amazing. of all the different yeah. costumes and all the different saints that you've obviously been researching mm. because all of the children have their very own story as to why they had dressed up and chosen that mm. particular saint. So that was really, really special. And, of course, all the teachers love getting dressed up too. <laughs> yes, we've had a lot of dress-ups this term. Um, so, And then the latest big event in the primary has been the kindergarten orientations, which we've we've touched on. Um, but it's, it's amazing to see how the children have come in just so settled mm. um, and ready to, ready to learn and play. Yeah. So it's very exciting. Yeah, I think it's one of the smoothest transitions we've ever had. The, the children so positively engaged, not just with the environment and the equipment mm. and the games mm. that we had for them, but they really engaged with each other. Mm. It was really beautiful to see their socialisation and collaboration through play and through some of the activities we had set up for them. It was really, really special. We're really excited to continue meeting them over the next two Wednesdays mm. and seeing how this, you know, you know, little primary school is, is slowly growing and, you know, 64 students were really excited. Um, so, you know, a really good opportunity, not just for the students to get to know each other and socialise, work together, but for the teachers to work alongside um, the students as well. This will help us with forming their classes, um, you know, towards the beginning of next year and yeah, we're, we're really excited and we're also really looking forward to actually spending some time, even though virtually, with the parents um, so we can give you a little bit of a, a taste and a few tips and tricks mm. of what starting school might look like next year. Okay, now before I get Mr Castellino to talk about the secondary, uh, so parents, you know that you can ask any questions that you wish. I can see that... Speaking of... Yes, I can see that there are questions already. But uh, just before we get to the questions, we'll hand over to Mr Castellino to talk about what's happening in the secondary student school. Thank you, and it's, um, and it's quite amazing just to hear the primary team and, and everything they're talking about because one of the challenges is being on two campuses and going over to the primary campus, but it's always happening there. <laughs> it's just so fantastic and exciting to hear all those things as it is in the secondary campus. So um, we've got, a, we've got a, a big kind of end of the year coming up, mm -hmm. so a few things that I just wanted to highlight in our, in our secondary uh, context. So uh, the first thing is that, as Mark mentioned, um, we've got our Year 7 camp. Now, who would have thought that we would actually be going on Year 7 camp this year? This year? Oh, yeah. I know. But um, we are so excited that um, 
thank God the COVID restrictions have, have kind of eased. So uh, we're taking this opportunity to, um, to allow our year sevens who uh, kept asking all year, do you reckon we'll go on camp? So I said, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> so, and we are. So 19th and 20th, which is in a couple of weeks time on the Thursday and Friday, we're going out to the Sydney Academy of Sports and Recreation Centre out at Narrabeen. And we're gonna have a fun camp. Um, there's going to be great activities um, on this camp. There's going to be a lot of um, water activities. There's um, small group activities. There's high ropes. There's all these fun team kind of building activities um, that that's going to be occurring. So I just want to remind the, the parents, uh, most of you have um, done the right thing and you've gone online and you've registered. So a couple of outstanding um, kind of things that we need to do if you haven't done that, if you can just get onto that link so that you can register so that your son and daughter can be part of that. So that's gonna be occurring in a couple of weeks time. Um, and just like the, um, the kidney orientations, we've got our year seven orientations occurring on the 20th of November. We've got 129 year seven students uh, for 2021. So that is going to be um, exciting and we're gonna give them a fun day. And um, there are so many exciting things um, at Santa Sofia that, that we run, and we're gonna give our kids an experience of showing them around our, our college. Um, they'll be involved in some sports activities, music activities, and, um, and one of the cool things we do do in year seven is our personal interest projects, where kids get to choose uh, a project that they kind of wanna work on. So we're gonna give our year sevens for next year, a bit of a taster uh, in that. So I think that should kind of whet their appetite to some of the experiences that they will um, that they will have in Santa Sofia. But it's going to be a fun day um, that you know where the kids will get to meet one another and hopefully you know inform some friendships. Yeah. Uh, I might just time. chime in there, Daryl, because mm. uh, the E seven orientation is on the twentieth. That's right. But the week before that, on the thirteenth we have in a step up to high school day. Mm. And that is for students with learning needs. Uh, they will come in a week before to have an extra orientation uh, compared to the other students. Okay? Yeah, and, and, and Mrs. Coleman and Mrs. Uh, Houseman um, are gonna facilitate that day. And, and that's a great day. Kids in year seven this year still talk about that step up day, um, as well as the orientation day, because it really helps them kind of ease into um, into the high school, I guess, and they feel a little bit more comfortable um, over the holidays and look forward to the start of high school, which can be a little bit scary, but, you know, we really ease them and support them into that. Um, and then finally, we've got our end of year celebrations. So um, as uh, Mrs Musgrave and Mr Taylor was explaining, that um, we're really blessed to have Father Omar and Father Carlos being, you know, so involved. Um, and in the secondary context, um, they come out every Wednesday and Thursday mornings to run Eucharistic adoration and benediction for our students. Then they stay back for any kids that want the sacrament of confession. So it's just such a blessing to have them. Um, and they're going to be celebrating our end of year mass at the secondary uh, campus on the 14th of December. And I think for the primaries, that's on Friday, yeah. the 11th. Um, so in, in the primary, that'll be um, at the, the parish itself. In the secondary, it'll be at, at our Schofields uh, campus. So that's the 14th of December, we'll be having our end of year mass celebration, which will be really nice. Um, and then we're gonna have our graduation and award ceremony. Um, and that's gonna be exciting. That'll be showcasing a lot of our musical talents and drama talent. Uh, it'll also be giving um, awards um, out to our, to our secondary students and primary, but that'll be to be confirmed in terms of a, a date for that. So uh, just watch this space and we will um, certainly be sending information out for all of those end of year celebrations. So a lot there. Yes. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I'm tired just talking about it all, so it's gonna be exciting. Okay, parents, now it's over to you. Okay, so we've got quite a few questions here waiting to be answered. So well, Steph, can you just read out the questions? Yes, of And then we could, um, Take turns in answering them. Of course, of course. First, uh, good evening to Kerry. I can see that she's sent in a question. Now, we always know that when Kerry sends a message, if I don't say hi to Luke, <laughs> I get in trouble the next morning. So, hi, Luke. I'll see you in Press Circle tomorrow morning. But Kerry has asked, will the primary students get to meet their teachers before next year? Well, we are so lucky that Mr. DeVries has worked his magic and actually all our kindergarten, year one and year two staff 
have already started as of today. <laughs> so the students actually met the Year 2 teachers during Prayer Circle this morning. It's really exciting. So can I announce the classroom teachers? Sure can. So the, for kindergarten, our two teachers will be Miss Georgia Fitzalan and Mrs Maria Finucan in Year 1. Uh, you may have seen the teachers around already over the past few weeks, but the two Year 1 teachers will be Miss Charlene Espiritu and Miss Stephanie Messina. And the Year 2 teachers will be Miss Ashley Tavone and Mr James Petrie. Did you say Mr? I did say Mr. <laughs> We've scored a male teacher in the primary. Yeah. <laughs> so really exciting to share that news with you all. All of the students have already met them, uh, so they might come home and start talking about some of the new teachers. You might um, hear some names. So the teachers are already on board with us, um, and doing some onboarding, some professional development, but are also working within the classrooms and um, really excited to, to get their hands in yeah. the word. It was really nice today. One of the um, the year one teachers for next year were working with some of the kids um, in maths and, um, and it's just building those relationships already. So the children are feeling really comfortable and excited for next year. So it'll be a really smooth transition. Yeah, absolutely. It's really exciting. Okay. okay. I've just got uh, Michelle here has asked a question about start dates for the beginning of next year. Um. Michelle, we in the process of planning. Uh, we'll get to you within the next fortnight. We'll have all the information for you. Definitely by um, the uh, Friday the 29th. Yeah, yeah. Friday, Friday the 29th. We'll, we'll oh, have. I, sorry, I'm talking about next year. Yeah, yeah, we haven't quite decided yet, Michelle. We, there's a lot of planning because what we're trying to factor in is the MAI testing that needs to go on in the primary in kindergarten, year one and year two. And we work in a way of um, trying to fit it all in before the kids actually start their, their schooling. Mm. To be confirmed. So to be confirmed. You can see there's also some questions about excursions and incursions planned. The question is for the primary, but I'm gonna go both for, for primary and secondary. Sure. Obviously because of COVID, what we had planned, mm. couldn't, not all of them could go ahead. Year seven are really lucky that the camp can mm. still go ahead. So. In particular, in the primary, the teachers are planning mm. um, and budgeting for yeah. incursions and excursions to happen next year. Uh, but obviously, it will depend on health guidelines, mm. uh, what can and can't go ahead. But it's certainly in the making, mm. assuming we can go ahead. And I guess keeping in mind, we, we did know that, you know, excursions are so exciting and with restrictions around this year, this term having, you know, the incursion, the, the weather incursion, and also gymnastics, the children have felt like they've done some really exciting things still, so. Okay. Uh, I'm just, I'm seeing the same link first again. Uh, I can see Stephen's here's got a question. Are we taking enrolments um, for 2022 when Box Hill opens? Definitely. You, Stephen, you can enrol right now. Uh, we've got, as I said earlier in my presentation, we've already got 300 applications for 2022. So you don't want to miss the boat. I, I get in and apply right now. And we, we're planning to be in Box Hill wide. Fingers crossed term four next year. Correct. So Correct. That's our plan. Correct. Yep. Building and weather permitting. Yep. <laughs> yep. We're, we're on schedule and uh, I'm confident that uh, we'll move in in term four next year. Yep. That answers Trisha's question. Uh... Oh, Kerry just said Luke's not online yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm devastated, Kerry. Kerry. Luke gets back online, <laughs> just let us know. <laughs> 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 Will the kindy teachers meet the kids at the gate for orientation on Wednesday? Uh, so because of COVID restrictions, uh, at the gate, there will be Santa Sophia staff members that will allow you to sign in, get a parent package, get your child's name badge. Then I will come and meet you. And I'll walk you up to the veranda of the classroom. That's where you can drop the kids off. Unfortunately, at the moment, we can't have parents entering the classroom, but you are welcome to come all the way up to the veranda and you'll drop off there. And then after orientation is finished um, at 11, then you can come up and again, just we'll um, meet with the veranda. We'll bring all the, the children outside to you. And the kindy teachers are in the room settling the children and 
playing games with them and playing Play-Doh. So we'll be in there with yeah. them. And we've got lots of extra staff, as, as mm-hmm. mentioned, because we've got the Year 1 and Year 2 teachers already on board with us. There's many, many teachers and many hands around to support the little ones. But like I said, last Wednesday was really smooth. So mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's it will be a, a, exactly the same again this week. Um, I'm just getting some positive praise from Cheryl and Georgina. Thank you, Cheryl, for your support, as always. <laughs> Georgina as well, thank you for your support. Um, Salim, again, just some positive praise. Uh, and they just uh, she's just asking when will they need to purchase laptops for the Year 7 2021 students? Yeah. So uh, at the orientation evening, we will give you um, the specs for the laptop and we'll give you a supplier, preferred supplier, where you can access a discount. So um, on the, uh, the 19th, the this is the orientation evening, yeah. uh, on the 19th, we'll give you more information about the laptop details. Mm. Uh, Daryl, Shane here is asking, mm. is there any plans, or what are the plans for the year 10 students next year in terms of partnerships and extracurricular opportunities? Yeah, great question, Shane. Um, look, and one, one of the exciting things we've got in our secondary is our whole Pathways program. Um, really starting, I guess, the industry skills in Year 7, but particularly in Year 9 and 10, where it really goes to another level. Now, we've employed um, Mrs Stephanie Campanala, who's our Pathways and Partnerships um, uh, person. Um, and she has done a fantastic job. So one of the things that um, Mrs. Campanella does is she goes out uh, to industry and really has a look at the types of projects which our teachers are planning for for stage five, and then um, see if she can um, if there are some industry links there. So, uh, for instance, um, we're looking at our entrepreneurship. We're looking at. Um, also our psychology of the mind as examples, um, iSTEM, and right now actually uh, Mrs Campanella is going out to those industry contacts and to try to form some type of partnership. So for mentors to come in to, uh, to speak to the, the Year 9 and the Year 10 um, students, as well as um, help the teachers plan um, some of those projects. So right now actually that's taking place. So. Um, when that firms up, there will certainly be uh, notices to go out to the parents and to the kids, so to formalise that a little bit, but right now a lot of planning is taking place for those, um, for those initiatives. Uh, if I can happen. just jump in there, Daryl. Uh, so Stephanie's done a fantastic job, parents. She's, um, we're way into the process of partnering with Macquarie University mm-hmm. and Notre Dame University, and we will announce the details of those partnerships at a later date, but also we partnered with Stocklands. Stocklands has taken over the, um, they bought the, uh, the land rights estate from uh, Celestinas, and Stocklands are partnering with us mm-hmm. with the view to uh, sponsoring kids. Um, now, Stephanie mentioned this morning to me um, a new partner. Do you know who Paul is Um it was quite a, a reputable uh, company that wants to part. I just, I just forget what it was. But anyway, keep talking and it might come back to you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, if it comes back to you, we'll move on to another question, but yeah. jump in. Um, I can see Cheryl's here is just asking about the primary, the kiss and drop off, and how we've you know, made some changes and what that will look like next year as well. Yeah, so firstly, thank you to the parents in the mornings and afternoons um, working with us and making sure you know, keep the line flowing. You're doing yeah. a really good job. I'm there in the um, morning and I feel like I don't need to do anything. I just get to wave to you all. <laughs> um, I do ask, though, that when you are dropping off in the morning, that you drive all the way up to the top of the line past the zebra cross- crossing and don't let the students get out of the car until they're in front of the zebra crossing because behind that there's a whole lot of trees and I don't have line of sight of the students getting out of their cars. So for everyone, just like you always do, you've been doing a really good job of it, just following the leader all the way up to the top. And if you are parking your car and walking the children across, no problem whatsoever, please make sure you're using the zebra crossing. You need to come up to the middle um, because again, there's trees everywhere and I don't have line of sight of the students. Mm -hmm. Um, So 
one of the things that to look at helping with the ease of traffic next year um, is we're looking at the start and finish times um, of Santa Sophia um, school times. So at the moment, um, we're thinking of starting a little bit earlier to assist with that drop off um, in the morning so there's no queues to get in the school. And especially if that means we're fi um, starting earlier, we will then finish 10 minutes um, earlier, which then will alleviate all that traffic and parents having to come in um, and sit behind other cars. Um, a lot of you know that the traffic will keep flowing, um, but this will just help that little bit more. So, you know, there's that new start time we're looking at of 8.10 and the finish time of 2.30. So that should probably help with that. Yep. Okay, I'm just scrolling through our questions here. Um, uh, Trish, I'm not so sure if I've got your original question. I can see that you've apologised if it's been asked, but I don't know if I read out your first question. So if I haven't answered it, Trish, can you type it in again for me? Um, when Joe wants to know when they will find out if our if their 2022 applications are successful. Uh, well, I think. Um, we're keen to finalise that. Uh, I've asked Mrs Lyons, who our enrolment secretary, to send out uh, confirmation letters. Um, now I asked her, uh, what's today, Monday? Last Friday I asked her. So you should be getting something in the mail pretty soon, Joe, to say that you've been accepted. And uh, with the acceptance, you'll have to pay a deposit as well. Just a bit uh, hesitant to I know that Christmas is coming around and to pay the deposit would, um, you know, it's going to be a, a careful bit of budgeting mm -hmm. required. So um, very soon you'll know whether you accept it or not. Uh, Alana is just asking if the kelp will be opening term four next year. No, um, the kelp will only open in 2022. Uh, Darren's wondering if there will be a sports program at Box Hill. Well, certainly. I mean, one of the things is where um, we are looking at every um, opportunity in terms of extracurricular or activities and the sport, the type of sports program we're looking at is, uh, first of all, looking at it in terms of in the curriculum. So we're going to have um, state of the art exercise and sports and science uh, facilities. Uh, we're actually going to have a research hub in the, um, I think it's on level level four or five, level, isn't it? Level four. Level four is going to be, and that's where we're going to have, um, as I said, state of the art kind of sports science. So um, any students that are interested in coaching, uh, sports science, physio, getting you know, as I said, uh, getting people uh, from industry and the health profession to come in and, and help out and support our students that are interested in that. Um, as well as um, our normal sports, so PDHPE, we would look at um, entering into, well, right now we're actually looking at what type of competitions our students in, in would be. In terms of team sports? Yeah, team sports, so individual we, we, sports. We're particularly yeah. interested in joining the Hill Zone competition. Uh, so once we get into the school um, and we, our numbers can sustain team sports, we would be looking to enter the Hill Zone competition. Mm. That will be a, an inter-school type competition uh, in winter and summer colours. Great. Uh, Kelly wanted to know when Year 9 will be advised of their electives for next next year, I assume? Yeah. Will Year 9 be advised of next year's elective selections? Yeah, absolutely. So right now, actually, all the... Um, all the selections have, have come in and we're just uh, finalising our timetable for 2021. Um, and, and it's a bit of a juggling act because, um, as I said, in, in Year 9 and 10, there are so many different pathways that students can take in terms of, we've got students starting um, accelerated, um, accelerated programs in maths and science, um, others starting certificate um, two and threes. Um, and, and others that are also working on different uh, projects. So um, I would say probably in the next uh, fortnight um, that all of those selections would be firmed up and that would be uh, communicated to the students and parents. We've got another 46 comments here, so we're going to have to fly yep. through these. Okay, let's <laughs> go. A bit, bit of positive praise again from Crystal. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Crystal. Thanks for your support, Crystal. Uh, Shana was wondering about applications for the Kelk whether they need to start doing that yet for 2022? Uh, not just yet, uh, Charlotte, is it? Uh, Shana. Shana. 
So Shana, we, the CALC is going to be run separate from the school. So uh, I'm actually talking to a gentleman by the name of Mr. Anthony Goonan, who is in charge of all the CALCs in, um, uh, uh, in, the, in the diocese. And uh, we're working on the process to firstly employ a CALC director, and then the CALC director would um, run the enrollment process. So um, we're hopeful very soon. I'm hoping to have the CALC director employed either this year or first thing next year. Oh, very exciting. Okay. Cheryl wants to know if the parents are allowed on the slide. Well, you're going to have to vote. You're going to have to fight all the kelp kids, the kidney kids, and the, <laughs> and and the teachers. So good luck, Cheryl. <laughs> Oh, Mr. DeVries, remember the kindy students want to turn it into a water slide? Persuasive <laughs> 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 writing. Hose. <laughs> well, that's a new good risk assessment. <laughs> um, Stephen's asking about bus services for 2022. Mm. Yeah, so we, we're currently negotiating with uh, Busways and Hills Bus. And um, Stephen, what I encourage you to do is to apply for your Opal card and that would give the bus companies your address and your destination. So um, at the moment, we've got four routes um, that the bus companies have agreed to, uh, but we have, we're not in a position to announce it just yet, but definitely before the end of the year, you'll know um, what's happening uh, in terms of public bus uh, services. Stephanie's just hopped on. and. I the oh. company that you're looking for the name of was Jack's Tires and Auto. There we go. <laughs> she's just on, Thank you, Steph. jumped on and commented, so she, she's working her magic from the background. Um, Maria was wondering about extension math and science electives. Is that just for Year 9 or also available in Year 10? So the idea is that in Year 9 they start the accelerated programs um, with the plan when they're in Year 10, the Year 11 preliminary courses start for those students. So. Um, it's absolutely not just for Year 9, but the program starts in Year 9 and continues throughout the rest of their schooling to help them. Uh, Lily is wondering if siblings get automatic entry for enrolment. Uh, yes, Lily. We, our plan is to keep siblings' families together, so automatic enrolment. Uh, obviously, if they're Catholic, uh, that's the number one priority. But even if not Catholic, our Bishop Vincent, I like Bishop Vincent because he says Catholic education for everyone. Mm -hmm. So, yep, siblings will be kept together. Flynn in year one says, thank you for talking so long, I've got to stay up later. Oh, <laughs> no worries, oh, Flynn, well see you in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, just reading through. Um, oh, Tanya's just been replying about enrolments and siblings and um, being um, Catholic enrolments. Uh, are there any more details regarding the changes to Bush for term two? Oh, that jumped. Term two, 2021. Uh, so, How do they apply or yeah. they get automatic? So if if you um, are currently at the Katush, um, Katush, as you know, will end uh, their tenure in at the end of term one in 2021, and Kush will take over. Uh, so again, as I said, once we get our CALC director employed, uh, then uh, she will look after he depends, could be a he, uh, uh, that person will then um, negotiate the arrangements um, at the LLA site. Mm -hmm. I've just got a question from Julie. I'm wondering about Opal cards, but for 2022 students, do they need to apply for that yet? Ah, good question, Julie. I would apply. Um, the earlier the better, I think. So, yes. Would you believe I got through all those 46 comments oh, wow. in like five minutes? You <laughs> Parents, come on, we, uh, we're waiting. Any more questions? <laughs> Bring them on. Uh, when will we open in enrollments for... Pre uh, enrollments oh. are open for prep. Do they mean... I'm not sure if you mean the Kelp. Kelp, Kelp yeah. So yeah. the Kelp, well, we won't be able to open enrollments until we have a director. Yeah. And then we'll only be taking enrollments for 2022. And, we, and we're limited with the uh, the Kelp, with the preschool, because we can only take a capacity of 60 uh, enrollments. Yeah. So um, obviously, if you're part of the Santa Sophia family, and you've got kids at the school, you'll be given first preference. Mm. And then if you are a prospective parent as well, um, and I know 2022 seems um, quite far off, but 
a lot of people are inquiring and uh, putting expressions of interest. So it is worth, I think, doing that. Um, and then particularly next year to come to our open days and um, you know all these opportunities um, to, to, to see what we're about. But because uh, we are getting a lot of inquiries, so I would encourage that. I can see um, Stephen just asking a little bit more about Bush. So the before and after school care facilities that are currently available at OLA will continue just by a different provider. And then when we do move to Box Hill, we will also have before and after school care available. Yeah. And, and that would, when we move to Box Hill, the before and after school care, the hours would change from six in the morning till seven at night. Okay. So it's going to be long, early mornings and long nights. Uh, Beck has just asked, with Year 7s getting their laptops, how long are they expected to keep them for? Is that a laptop from Year 7 through to Year 12? Yeah, certainly. Um, and that's how we planned it, Beck. Um, if the kids look after their laptops, it should, it should be with them for, for um, five years. Mm. Uh, the Apple Macs. Mm. That's your lifespan. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, and, and look, that's that, that's right, Mark. So if they are, if you, if they do look after them quite well, and I mean, we, we, we go with Max because they seem to be less problematic with um, the viruses and other things. So the plan would be just to purchase one, one MacBook Air. Yeah. I can see some of the questions, uh, things we've spoken about before. Yep. Uh, Kerry was asking though when reports go home. Uh, ooh, um, I think week eight is when the reports go home. We, we have to send the reports home 10 working days before the end of school. So sometime in week eight, Kerry, you'll be getting uh, Luke and Jess's report. Mm -hmm. uh, we've spoken about the earlier start and early finish times at the primary next year. Um, you've spoken about successful applicants that hopefully we'll find out soon. Um, uh, thank you for clarification. Um, oh, so when will school photos be made available? Um, well, I was just given the proofs, Emma, mm. um, of the school photos just to confirm that um, the correct name matched with the correct photo and that it was all spelt correctly. So that's all being confirmed. Mm. So I imagine fairly soon. Mm. Um, I can't give you a date, um, but I did my end of, mm. of things from the school's perspective. So yeah. you'll so, definitely have the money yeah. in the year. It turned out beautifully. <laughs> oh, they're so beautiful. It looks amazing. This beautiful greenery behind them. Mm. That oh, honestly, the kindergarten in particular are so photogenic. <laughs> they just sat there and they went, cheese. And it was, oh, it's stunning. So you're going to get some really, really good photos. Oh, hold they go. <laughs> 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 <Never mind. laughs> um, I can see our oh, Tanya's just Angelina are responding. Thank you very much. Uh, will buses from OLA to Santa Sophia Schofield also operate between OLA and Box Hill after we move? Um, now, I, I know that the buses come along Withers Road. I don't know whether it will go past um, OLA because we won't have any association with OLA um, when we move to Box Hill, other than uh, it'll be our local parish. But in terms of the, um, is that Bentley Road? I don't think it'll, it'll, it'll go past um, Withers Road, past the Bentley Road intersection, and uh, go that way to Box Hill. Mm. So, because we'll move from private buses that we currently have to the to public, public buses. system. Mm, so, we won't have private buses moving between no, the schools no, anymore. Because no. um, obviously, we'll all be on the same campus. Correct, yeah. yeah. Um, what sort of learning, this is from Penny, learning support available at Santa Sophia for students year 7 to 12? Oh, heaps, heaps of learning support. Uh, we've got a diversity leader in both the primary and the secondary school, and we've got teachers' aides as well. Um, and they work with the teachers to adjust the learning and make adjustments to suit the level of difficulty that's required uh, for the uh, particular students. Mm. As well as intervention programs um, in, in maths and, and reading and literacy and so forth, so there is there is quite a lot. There's quite a lot. Yeah, some of the programs that we run in the primary are actually also mirrored in the high That's school. Right. So EMU is actually done over multiple years. Yeah. Um, so and we have so many school professionals that we could make an intervention program yeah. if we wanted to, couldn't absolutely. we? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's good. all personalised learning. So yeah. you know, absolutely. we will work towards achieving what we need to for the individual students. Um, Trish has just asked, regarding Year 11 and Year 12, um, is there multiple opportunities for different pathways? 
um, doing, you know, three HSE subjects in year 11, three in year 12. Absolutely. So, uh, Trish, is it? There? Yep. So, Trish, we um, our current year nines going into year 10, um, at least quite a few of them will be starting their prelim courses in year, in year 10. Yeah. So they'll be starting year 11 in year 10. And a lot of them would be writing their HSC subjects when they are in year 11. Mm. So this is a part that we, are, we would like to offer to students that choose it. Mm. Now, you may have a student, you may have a child that is not interested in that and they want just to go with the mainstream, mm. ATA or non-ATA. Mm. Uh, the school provide that as well. So the idea is that starting in year nine, we will offer students a range of pathways, mm. not just one pathway, uh, an ATAR or non ATAR. We'll offer them a VIT pathway, an accelerated pathway, um, a, a range of pathways. Uh, we will confirm start dates um, for next year. The newsletter spoke about year seven, eight, and nine start dates, but didn't mention year 10. So are we assuming that year 10 starts the same day as year yeah. yeah, So I, I imagine that uh, looking ahead next year, we'll have the year sevens begin before eight, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, so year sevens will have the school to themselves, whatever that date is, and then the next day, uh, eight, nine, and 10 will, will, mm. will start. Mm. And the same with uh, in the primary school. Uh, I imagine that we'll have kindergarten starting now, the kindergarten start later or earlier, Stephanie? Mm -hmm. Well, start date dependent on the MAI interviews. Okay. So it's to be confirmed in discussion phases. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also we can see that Vavan um, has said hello and so has Elise. Elise hi, Vavan. Hi, Elise. Hello. <laughs> hello. hello to any other boys and girls out there, whether you're from the primary or from the secondary. It's has Luke logged on yet? I don't think so, but I'll say hi <laughs> just in case. <laughs> I mean, I'll see them all for prayer circle tomorrow, so it's okay. okay. Um, apparently, Miss Fitzhallen, Miss Fitzhallen has <laughs> dinner, dinner, ready. <laughs> dinner ready and waiting Lucky for you, her. Yeah. <laughs> so, Monica, I'll be sitting at home shortly. <laughs> oh, too funny. Um, uh, what is the process for enrolling for the private buses for next year? So, uh, at the information night, uh, we'll give you a form to fill in and. Um, that's how you do it. So it's ex essentially an expression of interest. This is this Correct. is where this is where I live. Correct. Yes, tick. I want the private bus. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's it. I'm well done. done. Oh, I'm done. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm getting better at this. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So parents, um, thank you for your attendance this evening. Uh, it's been great. Um, we've enjoyed ourselves mm. as always. And um, I don't know if we're going to have another one this year. Um, oh. Yeah, well, we've still got two information evenings coming up. Correct, yeah. <laughs> so uh, give us your feedback as to how you found this, whether we go with the Zoom or webinar or Facebook Live. Um, just pop us an email and give us some feedback on, um, or write a comment uh, about how, how this was for, for you at home. So um, is there any other last minute... Uh, not really, no. Yeah, we will, I mean, we'll be in contact in terms of setting school back notices out and things, you know, mm -hmm. for those dates and things for end of year and beginning of next year. So mm -hmm. just uh, watch this space for that. Yeah. And uh, well, Monica, I'm sending Georgia. <laughs> okay. Oh, dear, thank okay. you to See all you, everyone. Positive Bye, everybody. Everyone. Bye. Great to see you.